When it comes to the Palestinian cause, let me just start off by saying that we can, as believers, grieve with any oppressed people. But to pretend like there isn't something about Masjid Al-Aqsa would also be an indictment of our own Iman, an indictment of our own faith. You read the surahs in the Quran where Allah talks about Al-Aqsa and talks about the sanctity of that place. And to disconnect yourself from it right now would be a serious error in our faith. Allah talks about this land very specifically and talks about this masjid very specifically. Allah calls it Al-Ard Lati Barakna Fiha, the land that we have blessed from within. Wabarakna Hawla, and we have blessed what is around it, not just blessed the land itself, we have blessed what is around it as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to it in the words of the prophets that came before Al-Ard Al-Muqaddasa, the holy land. When you go to that land and you pray in that land, a place where Ibn Abbas عنه, said, the land of the prophets. And as Muslims, while we pray to Mecca today, and we know that this was the first Qibla of the Muslims, there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just appoint Al Ka'bah to be the Qibla in the first place. Allah wanted to honor that place and Allah wanted to honor our Prophet. The Prophet ﷺ leading the prayer towards the Qibla of Al-Aqsa and leading the prayer towards the Qibla of al kaaba shows that he is Imam Al-Mursaleen, the Imam of the Prophets and the Messengers. It was a way of honoring our Prophet and it was a way of honoring those places. That Al-Aqsa should always remain in the hearts of the Muslims even though they pray towards Mecca. When they pray, their hearts are attached towards Al-Aqsa as well. The ulama mentioned the wisdom that the reward of a place is in two things. Number one, the virtue of the place itself. Number two, the virtue of the struggle to get to that place. And it's as if Allah and the Messenger are saying that this is a place that we will always struggle to get to and to pray in. And this is the place where the Prophet teaches us to connect ourselves to emotionally and spiritually as much as we can and physically. If you can't get there, then at least you send some oil to light up its lamps. This is our ummah, this is our attachment to Al-Aqsa. You want to see a blessed people, a people beloved to Allah? Imagine those people that were standing there in those nights when we were seeing the footage of them. If the reward of just praying there under normal circumstances is so rewardable, what then of those brothers and sisters? What then of that brother that we saw the iconic image of Ramadan praying his salah and they are surrounding him from all directions? And he looks as if they are not there because he's too focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, who is more evil than the one who prohibits the name of God being mentioned in his homes and seeks out its destruction. Tries to constantly plot so that he can destroy it and undermine it. This verse, dear brothers and sisters, actually is referring to Masjid Al-Aqsa first and then all Masajid, all places where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is mentioned by extension. But it was revealed in relation to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And it combines two things. The evil, the evil of seeking out the destruction of a place where Allah is remembered, especially in Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is the primary part, the primary masjid mentioned in this verse, and the evil of killing innocent people. Allah sees them, dear brothers and sisters. And Allah sees us and how we will respond when we see Masjid Al-Aqsa and we see those disgusting images. We're going to look inside of our hearts and see where our moral consciousness is when we say Shaykh Jarrah or we see Ghazr or we see Al-Aqsa. What happened to us? And I end with this hadith where the Prophet said, knowing, knowing the situation of these people. There will always remain a group in my ummah, always upon the truth. Always a thorn in the side of their enemies because they can't be broken. They are not harmed by those who betray them. And when they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Who are these people, Ya Rasulullah? Prophet Prophet could have said, Palestine. He could have mentioned something to, to, to mark that land, but he said it's the people in the Holy Land. 
and the people around the Holy Land, which includes Gaza, by the way. It's those people. You want to see a group of people that manifest steadfastness upon truth and sincerity, and that stand in the face of their oppressors, when their oppressors try to crush them, men, women, and children. You look at those images and don't just see the bombs falling. Look at the fearlessness in the eyes of those people as the bombs are falling on them. It's incredibly inspiring.